move through one week, the last week of Jesus' human life. This has allowed us to expand time, to freeze frame important moments, and dig deeper into our faith stories, our own stories. This morning marks the end of Lent and the beginning of our commemoration of Holy Week. And so let us speed up time a bit as we first remember the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem. We found our place in the parade and considered our place in the picture, our role as supporters of Jesus' mission in the world. And then we found ourselves in the midst of the chaos and throngs of people in Jerusalem for the Passover. We stopped there. Suspending the action for a moment, wondering how we could join Jesus in clearing out our own lives and hearts, our own places of worship, to make them a more welcoming place for the love of God to reside fully. We followed Jesus as he continued to teach in the city and among the people at the temple. His teachings filled our hearts as they filled those long ago. And we remembered the call to proclaim justice in the midst of injustice, wherever we find it. We joined the disciples at the table of extravagant affection and overflowing love. And then another supper, where all our assumptions about the way the world works were turned upside down. This week, we joined Jesus in the garden, Gethsemane is the moment when a chain of events begins that cannot be halted. Once Jesus is taken into custody, there is no going back. So we pause a moment with him in the garden just before his arrest. We feel his anguish. We feel his sorrow that arises when we face difficult circumstances. We walk among the sleepy disciples who just can't grasp what is about to happen. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Here we are, Jesus. We find ourselves alongside you in a garden of grief for the violence so many of this world endured. We are tired. We don't know what to do next, and so we sleep sometimes, hoping to awake from a bad dream. Forgive us, O oh God. Help us face this hour knowing you are always here, you only ask the same of us to be present, to be awake. You entered our story through Jesus. Now help us to enter fully into the story of your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. As we pray together silently, releasing our sorrows, our lamentations, our regrets, our sins. Know this, we can open to let the story remind us that no matter what we face or how we fail to meet the demands of the moment, second chances are possible. You are forgiven and freed, encouraged and loved by a God who wants you to live fully. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from Matthew 26. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into that time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. 
Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for a third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Too much wine, perhaps. Or maybe I'm so sleepy because I'm just so very tired. This week is taking its toll on me, watching our every step, wondering when the other shoe will drop, afraid that the commotion stirred up about Jesus will result in something terrible. I've been on edge ever since we got here. But oh my, that parade. Who would have thought that this man I met on the shores of my fishing spot would turn out to be three years of non-stop surprises? The entrance into Jerusalem was more amazing than all of it combined. I felt sure that I was part of something that was going to change everything. Now, I'm not so sure. Not everyone, it turned out, was so pleased with about Jesus' arrival here. And we've been under scrutiny for days. Then, tonight at the table, Jesus revealed that one of us was about to hand him over. I'm noticing who's missing here in the garden, and I'm wondering if maybe he was right. My gut turns over with the thought of it. I do not want to face that these people who have become my family could turn against one another under pressure. Fear threatens our very bonds. So why put ourselves out here in the open? I need to stay awake. Keep watch. I've got my sword. I know Jesus told me not to bring it, but come on. All he seems to think we need to do is pray. He asked us to pray with him. Yes, I pray. I'm praying. I fervently pray. But is it enough? How can God help us if soldiers arrive? And yet, I'm so sleepy. Jesus found in the Gospel of John in chapter 18. In this story, Jesus and his disciples went to a garden and wait there for Judas who brings a detachment of police. And when they approach Jesus, he asks them who they are looking for. And Jesus says, I am. They ask, are you Jesus of Nazareth? And he says, I am. He says, I am three times. What does that remind you of? Because if you were to read the story in your Bible, it says, I am he. But the actual word, is I am. The actual words are the words 
is it that Moses gets when he's on that mountaintop with the burning bush and God is telling him that he is to free his people? And he, who's trying to wiggle his way around this assignment, asks him, well, if I'm going to do this, who do I say is sending me to do this? And God answers, I am. Or we could translate it. I am who I am. I will be who I will be. I am. I am is a word and a phrase and a feeling that Jesus speaks throughout John's Gospel. In John's Gospel, Jesus declares that he is I am. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the light. I am the good shepherd. I am the bread of life. I am the gate. I am. This is a Jesus who goes into his trial and arrest and execution, proclaiming, I am. The Jesus found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke is a Jesus troubled in his soul, deeply grieving and in agony. When he comes with his followers, with his disciples, to Gethsemane, he says to the majority of them, sit here while I go over there and pray. And then he brings with him Peter, James, and John, and they go on a little farther, and he says to them, Peter, James, and John, those first disciples, those ones that have been with him from the very beginning, the ones that he called first, to those disciples he says, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here. Stay awake with me. This is a Jesus who facing what he knows is coming, his arrest and his execution by the state, takes time to pray. He pours out his prayer. My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. If it's possible, let it pass. Let it go away from me. Don't let this happen to me. And so he walks back to check on Peter, James, and John. He finds them asleep. He says to them, so could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he invites them again to stay awake and to pray. And he goes a little farther and kneels down and prays. And this time he says, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. He comes back to Peter, James, and John and again finds them asleep. He again asks them to stay awake and pray. And he goes and kneels down and prays and says the words again, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. My father, 
if it cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And then he comes back. And yet again, he finds his disciples asleep. Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. This scripture teaches us the importance of prayer, even when we know the answer is no. Have you ever prayed that prayer? The prayer that you have poured your heart out in, that prayer of grief and sorrow. And you know the answer is no. Have you prayed the prayer that Jesus prays this prayer? He prays, I don't want to die. Of course, he uses different language, right? He says, take this cup from me. Make this cup pass from me. He says, I don't want to die. I think there are a lot of people praying that prayer right now. You think about the people who are praying those words, asking for that cup to pass from me. Those who are taking care of so many COVID-19 patients with inadequate equipment. We've seen the death toll among nurses and doctors start to rise as they're caring for and trying to save the life of people, they are putting their own life at risk. And I imagine that they can't help but pray. I don't want to die. I want this cup to pass from me. But here's the thing. Even though they ask that, even though they asked for the cup to pass, to not die, even though they know that they don't want to do this, that they're putting themselves in danger, that they might be risking their family's lives, I mean, we've seen the stories of the emergency room doctors who are living in a camper, who are staying in a hotel, who are being put up somewhere else because they're afraid to go home and pass this horrible disease onto their family. And yet day after day, hour after hour, they go back. They go back to care for these people because they know they're needed. They know it's what they have to do. They pray for the cup to pass. But they're grieving like Jesus. They're grieving deep in their soul, knowing the pain that is coming, knowing that those they are caring for may not survive. But they go anyway. They do their jobs. This week, can we pray for them? Can we pray for them? Let this cup pass. Let your will be done. Sometimes when we pray that prayer, the answer is still no. Sometimes when we pray that prayer, we are like the disciples and fail. We can't stay awake and pray. 
We can't stay awake to see it through. In fact, we get so scared that we run away when the danger comes, when the events start happening. The disciples are full of fear that night. They are full of fear as they are surrounded by soldiers and police. And Jesus is dragged away and arrested. They are full of fear and they run. But we know that's not the end of their story. Their fear is not the end of what will happen, what they will learn, who they will become. Their fear is but a moment. Their fear is their cup passing. They're letting go. They're forgetting who they are and who they are called to be. But eventually, they learn to stay awake and pray. As we enter this holy week, where people are full of grief and grieving, when we hear the stories day after day of these people dying, as our entire country, our entire world is fearful and mourning. But Jesus teaches us in that fearful, grieving agony to sit here a while, to breathe in deeply and to breathe out, to breathe in, to breathe out, to breathe in deeply and ask God, I don't want to die, to ask God to let this cup pass. And we, what we can do for every soul that we see that is taken by this horrible disease, we can pray, let your will be done. It doesn't ask what we want, what we desire. It lets God be there in that moment. It lets God be there in the moment to comfort and support. Let your will be done. To give strength to the doctors and nurses and health care aides and the janitors and all those that have this terrible burden. Our job to stay home, to wash our hands, to stay awake, and pray. Amen. Let us pray. I am deeply grieved. We hear you say those words, Jesus. I am deeply grieved. And so we offer you in prayer our loved ones the ones we worry about, the ones whose homes are not safe, the ones who have no home. Oh God, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. We hear you say that, Jesus. We hear you say to God, yet not what I want, but what you want. And so we ask your protection and grace for all those who are exposed to risk by their work, by their care for others. We ask your protection upon our families and friends. We ask your protection on all of those who are on the front lines. We ask your protection. And we hear you say, My Father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Oh God, we ask that your will be done. Your will be done.
Your will be done. As we pray together the prayer that you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Whether we are in front of computers or with smartphones in our hands, God is using technology to draw us closer. God is also using new avenues for us to contribute our talents, time, and treasure to the church. Our Creator uses every means to draw us closer and share what we have. In this time and space as we support our staff and care for our congregates, our giving sustains the work of the church. Please give as you can as our ministries continue in this most unique of situations. And with gratitude we pray, gracious God, for treasures collected, for time given, and for talents shared, we express our thanks. Amen. In the midst of the sudden death of loved ones, friends, lovers, children, he said, come and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. In the joy of new births and baptisms, you say, come and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. In the hidden uncertainty of our self-worth, when we've wondered if there really could be a place for us at God's table, you said, come and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. In the crucible of transformation, with life as we've known it has fallen apart, when we had questioned our identity, you said, come and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. In the center of our fears and longing for new life, different life, sometimes even the old life we've known, you said, come and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. In sickness, in body-shattering and mind-numbing sickness, when treatment left us bereft of desire, you said, come and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And now you have us dreaming of a hungry church and a tangible God of people we have come to know and perhaps love coming to you laying down our burdens for just a moment, daring ourselves to dream of healing and reconciliation, daring to think of opening our hearts a little more, daring to be nourished for another leg of our journey. These are our bodies given to you. Amen. Amen. Among friends and gathered around the table, Jesus took bread and broke it. 
and said, this is my body broken for you. Later, he took a cup of wine and said, this is the cup of the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take it and drink, all of you. Remember me. Let us pray. Merciful God, send now in kindness your Holy Spirit to settle on all of this bread and all of this cup and fill them with the fullness of Jesus and let that same Spirit rest on us, converting us from past patterns of this passing world until we conform to the shape of him whose food we now share. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. As we have been nourished and fed, may we go forth and feed as we have been fed, love as we have been loved, forgive as we have been forgiven. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember that God loves you and always will, that Jesus loves you and always will, that I love you and always will. May you act on that love.